Um, okay, so I'm just gonna set it up real quick, and I, I really want to hear what you say, but I want to be able to to share what what's worth sharing, and and just so you know, Tracy, it's great to connect. Um, just setting this up, I reached out to O and Brian and, and another friend with all that's happening that I just said, look, I want to talk to, I just need to talk to some real people. I don't want to hear news. Right. I don't want to hear pundits. They talk about bringing on experts. As far as I know, you guys, you guys have been black your whole life. So I would consider you experts. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted, and these are my friends, you know, and my brothers and I love them. And so I wanted just to have some real talk. So with that said, uh, let me just get out of the way. And Tracy, if you could share what you were just about to share. Well, uh, like I said, I, the right and the left, I, I don't think that's who's running our country. I truly believe it's the money that's running the country. Uh, if, if you look at it, Jewish people, they have the stores, they have, they have lawyers, they have s senators, they have whatever they need, and no one's messing with them. If we would put our dollars together, and if, first of all, if we had the, the, the teaching and the understanding of the value of togetherness with money and business, things would be a whole lot different for us, you know? I come from, I'm a baby from Philadelphia, you know what I mean? And, and raised in the ghetto. It, I, I, I see, that's all, that's all I knew growing up, you know what I mean? And it, it was racism there, it's still racism here, but it, it's just gonna take us to, I guess, educate our young ones and that financial, it's, it's not about the, the physical fight, it's about the mental fight, it's about Preparing for the end, if that makes sense. Yeah. It, it's about having your dollars stacked, having 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 something for your children to fall back on, to break this system of, of systemic racism. Yeah. But because that's the only way that's the only way the government is going to uh, feel us, if, uh, for lack of a better word. They they they're not going to feel the protests. Yeah, that's great. That's good. But it's going to come a time where that's not going to be enough anymore. It's, it's going to die off. And once that die off, they're going to be like, oh, these niggers went right back to doing what we want to do, you know? But when we start hitting them in the pocket, when we stop going to Walmart, when we stop going to all these other places, when we, when we, get, a, when we get enough Black-owned banks, you know, there's a few right now, and, and that's what we need to do, is put our money there and, and have them say, oh, shit, what are we going to do? Like they talk about the, 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 the Selma, uh, uh, boycotts of the bus. What did they do? They they said, "Oh shit, these guys are walking for a year and a half. We got to do something." Yeah, you know, we, we're losing money. So it, it's it's just I I, I just I, I just don't see the government, Democrats or Republicans, doing anything for us in the near future. Yeah, I, I think these young brothers and sisters and young white uh, Americans that's out there fighting on the front line for us right now. That's where the change is going to come, and 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 that's the, that's the only way it's going to be, and yeah. and that's just the way I feel. Being a 51 year old man who's who's trying to break the cycle of my uh, uh, my my poverty, if, if I'm, that's a lack of a better word, I work, I'm middle class, I do okay, but I have my son in the school that's 17 thousand dollars a year, can't afford it, but I'm trying to break the cycle. I'm trying to let him know. Hey, this is where you need to be. Rub shoulders with that white man. Rub shoulders with that person. Get to know them. Understand what they're thinking. Once you understand what they're thinking, you can bring that back to yours, and that's where we're going to start to make the change. Yeah. You know, what I hear in that is, um, I mean, there's a lot there, but um, it, what really stood out to me is that what, what you're thinking is a key is this financial independence. Oh, definitely. And definitely. that doesn't, you know, that as a as a talking point is not one that that we hear a lot. Right. And well, that it, feels really important. Well, it's it's very important, and unfortunately, uh, we we don't have that one person that's willing to stand up and say, "Look, I got millions and millions of dollars." I'm going to start a black-owned bank in every state 
and this is where we start putting out dollars. You know, we and God knows we got enough athletics and entertainers that have the money to do it. But, but we, we well, they, they, they probably would try. But my thing is that somebody's going to have to take that first step. Yeah. You know, and so, until that first step happens, I'm not saying do it all at once. Do it, do it all by themselves. There's enough of us that that could do that. Yeah. Hey, so just a question. Uh, I, just, oh, oh, I just had a, a quick question. Can, um, can I ask you something before you ask that? Do you guys mind if I if I live stream this on my Facebook page? If it. Yeah, make it okay. 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 Sorry. Oh, um, go ahead and ask while I, while I set this up. Yeah, I was just going to ask, uh, get your opinion. I, I'm sorry, I forgot, got, didn't get your name uh, with Brian. Oh. Um, nice to meet you, brother. Nice do you think, you. do you think the what we had in Black Wall Street or what they started in Black Wall Street before? Do you think that's possible for us to do now? It is, is if it? we get together. I believe it's possible, but you. We, we, we are, we're so, uh, for lack of a better word, set against each other. You, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to, mm -hmm. uh, try to be, be higher than the next one instead of coming together. It's not going to happen in our day and age. Like I said, right. those young brothers and sisters that's on the corner right now out there standing with each other, that's where the change is going to come. Right. I was listening yeah. to a pod, I was listening to a podcast and they said, I mean, with everything that's going on, it's so disheartening. They were saying that we're not going to see it in our lifetime, and possibly our kids aren't going to see it in their lifetime. But hopefully, after that, we'll start to see some more change. That that's more that you can really see the change. I believe that, but I I, I believe I, I believe in my heart. I have two 16 year old uh, children, a boy and a girl, and I have a 22 year old. And I do believe in their lifetime they're going to see the change. Because I, I'm telling you, that's that's what's in that's what's in the corner in my neighborhood right now. Sixteen year old kids. He set up a, he set up a march. He set up everything. You know, these are mm -hmm. young men. You, these I'm are young men. That, I have that two sixteen year old um, children, a boy and a girl, and I have a twenty two year old. I do believe in their lifetime they're going to see the change. Because I, I'm telling you, that's that's what's in that's what's in the corner in my neighborhood right now. Sixteen year old kids. He set up a, he set up a march. He set up everything. You know, these are young men. I, 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 I just look forward to it. And I have a 22 year old. I do believe yeah, I in their lifetime they're going to see the change. Because I, I'm telling you. So I am, I got to apologize, I'm streaming here and I'm hearing it come through a second time. I don't know if you guys are hearing that repeat. Yeah, I'm hearing the same thing. Let me, let me get that, let me get that squared away. Yeah, we hear that audio. <laughs> I thought somebody was talking, but then I was like, man, you said the same thing. I got to apologize, I'm streaming here and I'm hearing it come through a second time. I don't know if you guys are hearing that. Yeah, I'm hearing the same thing. I, it just keeps looping. Let me see. I might have to. I might have to take that off. I'd rather, you know, I want to share this, but we'll. Here we go. Okay. All right. Uh, so oh, we're all we're all set now. Uh, apologies for that little technical thing, and I missed about a minute of what what you're saying there. Um, are, are, we, are we? Oh, you guys are both there. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we were stepping outside. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Um, well, thanks for bearing with me for that for a minute, you guys. Um, and I'm, I apologize. While I was setting that up, I, I missed about the last minute or so of what you guys were saying. Um, but maybe maybe just tee me off real quick to what what you were just chatting about. Well, we were talking about Black Wall Street. Well, yeah. Owen made a comment about Black Wall Street and asked if uh, we would see any kind of change here in our time. You know, and and for me, I I don't believe I will see it, but I truly believe my 16 year old children will see it, and and see the beginnings of it. May not see the end of it, but I think they will see the the beginnings of it, and and change will start from them. So you, you know, know I, I I come from oh I'm sorry I, I come yeah. from I, I come like I said I, I'm I'm born in the 60s I'm in the 60s baby I've I've seen quite a few things in my lifetime. 
I have never seen anything as bad as this. Like I said, I seen him drop a bomb on the, the, the move people back in Philadelphia, where, you, where it says in the Constitution you shouldn't drop uh, uh, bombs in your, your own country, you know? But they, they bombed those people for living in houses. Uh, I just, I just, I don't know. It's, it's scary. It's scary. Mm -hmm. But all I can do is hope and pray that, that, uh, I, man, it's, it's hard. It's almost heartbreaking. You know, when you think about the things that's going on and the change that you want to come, that you want to see to come. And, and, and it's just, I don't know. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Oh, made a good point, Black Wall Street. I, I believe it could come again. And I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just lost for words at this point. Don't, that is just, don't apologize. This is, I mean, this is a, a space for you to have to be able to, to share this. And this is what... Well, I've been at a loss for words myself, and I'm a little bit on the outside looking in. I mean, we're all in the same pot together. And as we talk about, there's powers that be, but I have particular advantage and privilege in certain ways that, um, that I don't know what it's like to not have that. And that was one of the things I was going to ask right. you was, how do you feel things are now as opposed to how they were? And, and, but even what you just said kind of led into that a little bit, right? Where we feel like we've had all of these like landmark milestone, big accomplishments and things that have happened. And here we are today. And, you know, you guys are all fathers and you're saying like, man, I, I don't feel that good about it. Right. Well, I think, I think, I think things are kind of the same. I think it's just, you just seeing it now. Like, I believe yeah, exactly. these things have been happening for so long and it's, continue, it's going to continue to happen. We just have cameras showing us what's really happening. People have been speaking about it, but there, there was no proof. So then you had to go to court and try to prove your side. And, and the court system isn't worked that It isn't set up that way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, luckily, I've been able to avoid most of the things that are happening now with the police and, and, and everything, but that's not everybody that I can't say the same for everybody that I grew up with or have or my friends or family. So I think I had wrote a piece to, to my girlfriend just saying that it was sad the day that I was going through. It was just like, I just kind of like gave up. Like I didn't feel like it was ever going to change. Um, I just didn't feel like it was just, it's just not set up for us in no shape, form or fashion. It's not set up for us to win. And I don't, usually you try to stay solution focused and it's like, I can't find a solution where we can even get to that point where it's equal. So, I mean, with the protests going on, it, it brought back some hope, a lot of hope. Um, just knowing that these, like, these young kids are out there doing it. Uh, mixed in with the older generation, but it's these young kids that are going to lead it. So it's giving giving me some more hope, but it's just it's sad. It's disheartening. I just don't know. It's hard to look at a situation and you can't figure out how to get past it, and nobody's figured it out so far. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah, it's tough. It's hard to get past that. Do you think? And this is what we were talking about a little bit before oh, um, you jumped on, do you, do you guys believe that the majority of people want to get it figured out, you know, or, or that they don't want to get, get it figured out? Why, why is it so hard? I guess that's the question. Why, like, it doesn't seem that it should be that hard. And I, I think that the majority of people, if you just, if you literally spoke to every single person in this country on an individual basis, the majority of them I would think would be like, yeah, change things, it's not right. But yet we just can't crack it. And it seems like it's like, from what I'm hearing from you guys, it's kind of like a dangling carrot, you know, that now you're both feel, you, like even, oh, you know, you're saying like, man, I, I don't know. And now I'm getting hope. The older generation to me, right. you know, like, I mean, 
I, you know, there's a big window when I haven't dropped in with you guys. So I still feel like, oh, these are these are my, my college guys. And now you're right, the older right. generation that needs to get lifted up again. And then Tracy before, who's a, a little bit older than you guys, is like, we were a little bit of, the, of that generation probably lifting Tracy up or you guys, you know, and now it's cycling. Why is it so Correct. hard? Why, what do you think it is? Why, why does this, why does it keep cycling like this? Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Did, did you hear me? Yeah. Fear. Yeah. yeah. It is fear. Can you speak on that more? From, fear from who? Uh, about what? It, it's, it's fear from the, the ones that's running this, the money. You know, if, if we were on an even kill, and I believe this in my heart, and this is my belief, if we were on an even kill, things would be a whole lot different. It, it, it wouldn't be just the, the 1% be all white. There'll be some black 1% up there also. You know, there it, it is. It's it's all based on fear. Look at look at what our look at what our ancestors and people have been through for years and years and years. You know, and and you could go back now and look at some of the video that's happening today, and you see the same thing happening then. You know, mm -hmm. so we 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 may have made some changes, but not really. Not really. There's there's not much change in it. The only thing changed is the scenery. Hmm. And the color clothes we wear, you know, that that's it. That I, I come from, like I said, Philadelphia, the, the ghetto. When when I was being raised up, you knew all your neighbors. Everybody knew each other, and they done created such a divide where people are afraid to even know their neighbors. You know, that and that. I I believe that's part of the reason black folk has lost what we had because we, we got, we got distressed with each other and start separating ourselves from each other instead of, Hey, you okay. Do you need something today? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and that's the way it was when I was raised up. And, and I, I just, I just believe the, the government and those one percenters fear a strong black mind. Yeah. Be, be, if you look in history, there's quite a few inventors, that inventions were taken, <laughs> you know, because they didn't have the money to sure. support it or they didn't have the, 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 the people to support it, you know. So uh, fear, fear is the biggest one, I believe. Mm. And so the 1% is on both sides of the aisle, right? It's not correct. It's not a Democrat Republican thing. Never, never. It's, like you said, it's, I don't believe it's ever been a de Democratic or Republic thing. Yeah, it never. It's always about the money. Always about the money. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought growing up or back in the day, most black people did vote or were Republicans. Well, that was way back in the day. Way uh, back, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and then somebody, somebody lied to him and said, oh, the Democrats are where you should be. You yeah. should love the Democrats. You know, I mean, yeah. well, way back in the day, we started Republican, and I think it was in Jamestown uh, where uh, they started uh, voting uh, democratically uh, because of that uh, the fight that went on there. Not it was in Jamestown or ah, uh, it's been so. Now you're trying to make me go back in my history, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I think just to add on to to your point, Tracy, and to to Aaron's question of. Um, I think it's just deep rooted. I think it's just been going on so long. Um, I think it's hidden at times and at times it comes out. So um, I think it's hard to get over over that fact that it, it's, it's always, it's been there. It's always gonna be there. And like I said, just trying to figure out a way to, to get past that. You know, with, with that, I, I'd love to know from you guys, um, you know, you guys are in, in just different parts of, you know, Colorado, Arizona, working class fathers, middle class suburbia, everything on the check boxes is like, seems okay, right? I want to know from you, like, how often or when do you feel 
the color of your skin in a negative way based on your external environment. And I'm going to give, give you an example just to make sure that my question's clear. I'm, I'm on a wheelchair and I don't, I don't always feel it. Sometimes I'm just, I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm talking to you guys. It does, it's not part of it. But when I go to a concert, I feel it. When I need my right. kid to, to, to read something out of a cupboard for me, I feel it. So it's from that place that I'm curious and in a, like a negative way, right? Mm -hmm. So from that place, I want, I'm curious, when do you guys feel the color of your skin in a negative way? Whenever you walk out your door, <laughs> honestly, I mean, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, you know, just from when you, when you wake up first in the morning, you know, you see stuff on TV that, that depicts the color of your skin. You know, you see on the news, this whole George Floyd thing, or it's Trayvon Martin, or it's Eric Garner. Just like I'm saying, when you walk out the door, you're going to feel it because when you get on the elevator, some lady's going to clutch your purse. You know, when you're <laughs> standing in line or something, you see people like look at you a certain way. If you walk into a store, you don't necessarily want to put your hands in your pockets because you think that people are going to think you're stealing. You tell your kids, don't touch anything. You know, there's a, a whole bunch of aspects that uh, go into the way that we think we don't experience on a day to day basis, you know. Uh, just the whole being pulled over there by a police officer. A lot of people just would think that's one of the scariest things ever for a black person. Nowadays. <laughs> yeah, especially nowadays, you know. And it's like as soon as they get behind you, like your heart is pounding because you know that there's probably an 80% chance that they're going to pull you over, you know. So just given that fact and given that that's a real thing that occurs in the world today, you know, we, we, we experience, we experience like racism just on a higher scale, you know, so, so that's, it, what I'm hearing, that's kind it's, of where it's always there. It just, you, you, you always, you always feel it. It's always there. Yeah. You can't really escape it. You know, you can sit at home and when you're in, you know, the, the comfort of your own home, you can definitely escape that and and you can be able to chill for a sec, but as soon as you turn on the TV, you're definitely gonna see something that reminds you that you're a black person living in the white world. You know what I'm saying? May I ask a question? Oh yeah, yeah. You we've seen these riots going on and we've seen these uh uh militant non police force men come out with ARs hanging across their chest, sidearms. I'm in a right to carry state, okay? There's people walking in Walmart with firearms on their hip and whatnot. I am afraid to do it because I would be blasted. There will mm -hmm. probably be an army of police waiting outside the store when I walk, when I exit, you know? So, I mean, the mentality of the black man right now is be safe. Don't even put yourself in harm's way because your harm, your way will end in tragedy. You know, uh, uh, lately, and like, like uh, O said, O's your name, correct? Yeah, OJ. Yeah, OJ. Okay, like you said, there is uh, so much difference in and I, I don't know, it's, it's, dude, it's just crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. You, you're afraid to do anything be, because of who you are. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of, we're, we're looking at, like, I just, you wanted to say everything I hear is like, okay, well, what do we do about it? What do we do about it, right? Like, what do we, there's so many different things. And I heard um, I heard George Floyd's brother speak, and what he was saying, you know, stop the violence. But he was his big thing, his passionate thing was vote, vote, 
vote. Got to vote. And and based on our previous conver on what we've been talking about here, our conversation, who do you vote? Who do you vote for? You know, how how, how does that solve it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the vote does not matter. The vote is not for us. The, the vote is for those 1%. Again, it's all about the money. You know, you, you said you voted for one uh, Republican your, your whole time of voting. I mean, I voted, for, I voted for one Republican in my whole time of voting. Yeah. You know, so it, it's like. What, Reagan? Right, it was. That's who I voted for. I voted for Reagan. That's who I. And I, I'll say it proudly. I voted for Reagan. You know, and, and it's the the vote's not enough anymore. Uh, like one of the uh, young ladies behind me just said, it's not enough. Yeah. You know, you, you got to hit them where it hurts. They're not going to feel it until it's financially involved. Period. Point blank. They're not going to feel it. They don't care. They're going to continue to do what they do. You, you've seen after the George Floyd death, they're still kneeling on people's necks. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You arrest a six-year-old out of school. I hope you guys saw that. They took a six-year-old out in handcuffs because she threw a temper tantrum. Are you kidding me? There is something wrong, and it's not systemic. It's lunacy. People are going crazy. Period. They're going crazy. It doesn't even matter. It's, it's not even human anymore. Mm -hmm. It's it's like animalistic. You know, and and the pol the police, not all cops are bad. And I'm gonna say that again, not all cops are bad. But the bad are starting to outweigh the good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And something definitely needs to be done about that. Not defunding them, not uh, train them. You are a trained officer. You do not have to shoot to kill every time. Mm -hmm. I know you're told to do that, but shoot to wound somebody. If if they're if they're if they're after you, if they if you're fearing for your life, you know, you you're a marksman. You're you're trained at this. You you don't have to kill every time, and you don't have to you empty your clip. No no need for that. You know. You know, when um, you guys are all parents, and if you tell your kids, you know, hey, don't scribble on the walls. And then they scribble on the walls, and all you do is say, don't do that again. And yeah. then they scribble on the walls, and you just say, don't do that again. What's, what's their reason to stop if they're not held accountable? So there feels like there has to be something, a deeper level of accountability here. But to what you were saying, Tracy, it feels like there, it's, it's not even just the rules. There's something much deeper that we just Correct. can't quite break through. Correct. You know, and, it, and that's what, I mean, I can't, I don't feel even an ounce of the frustration that you guys do. And I'm, there's a frustration for me. Yeah. Um, and it's even harder to have conversations about it now because as blurred as the lines are and a little bit where we started to talk a little bit, you know, I guess I have friends on the left who think that I'm a very, a very conservative right wing person based on my beliefs of simply bringing things to the attention that say this doesn't seem to be working from the left and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden there's like no space for that and and a reason I, I i don't mean to bring like keep harping maybe on the left but i i really strongly believe that in a divided space beyond us come for us to come together it's essential that we begin by holding our own accountable as opposed to blaming others. Correct. So I keep looking to like my party or my side and say, what are we doing that's distorted to allow for, for real change and progression to happen? Stop killing us. <laughs> Stop beating us. 
actually talk to us. We are human, you know, and 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 that's where that's where that's where it's lost. You you have this gang of uh, blue blue guys that that just think my skin does not make me an animal. Okay, my skin does not make me aggressive. I get aggressive when you're aggressive towards me. I'm going to defend myself. And because I defend myself, I'm considered an angry black man, or uh, he, he, he's just ignorant, or and, and things of that nature. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. I, if, if I came to you and, and pointed my finger in your face and, and spit, in you, spit, in, spit at you and talk to you and degrade you uh, verbally, you're going to get upset. You're, you're going to say, OK, hey, stop. That's enough. And, and Enough is enough. And I forget the gentleman name that uh, made a speech a long, long time ago. He told the, the reporter, he said, if I come to you and say I'm hungry and you dangle a loaf of bread in my face and, and just continue to dangle the bread, and then I come back to you and say, hey, man, I'm really hungry. And, and you dangle the bread in my face again. Next time I come to you, I'm going to hit you in the head and take the bread, mm -hmm. you know? En enough is enough. En enough is enough. And that's why I truly, truly hope and pray and believe, again, that the young whites and the young blacks and the young Latinos that's out there fighting right now, standing on the street corner, asking for, a asking for change right now. That's what they're doing. They're asking for change. And, and, and it's, it's around the world. It's not just here. So this, this, has, been, this has been a long time coming. It's going to get a whole lot worse probably before it gets better. But but somebody has to has to start it. It, it had to be started. Unfortunately, uh, George Floyd had to die for it to start. It should have started a long time ago with Sandra Bland or Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. It should have started a long time ago before all these others had to perish. You know, but at at some point, the left and the right are going to have to say, okay, what are we doing? Like you said, what are we doing? What can we do? to fix this. And I would tell them to their face, fix your police force. Fix the people you have patrolling my area. Make them look like me. Make, make, have them look like me. Don't just have them all be white. Don't have them all be uh, Hispanic. Have them, have them look like me. I know there's some on the force. You know what I mean? Put them in my neighborhood. Because they'll be, I, I hope they, they will be a little more understanding about the plight. Yeah about what we've been through, about where we come from, about where we're trying to go, you know? But when you have an army of white men patrolling uh, the neighborhoods with, with and, and of course, some of them are, were, were picked on probably by the, the jock black at school. Some of them were probably beat up, you know what I mean? There, there, there's been beat, cops beat up in all fashions and all races, but that does not mean you have to carry it over to killing people. You, you have to talk to people. You have to stop. I have to tell my son when he leaves to drive to school, which is 35, 40 minutes away, to the school he goes to, if you're pulled over, don't say anything, keep your hands on the wheel, and ask for a parent. Say, please call my parent. Put your license and your, the registration all on the dash where the office can reach in and grab it. Don't move. Don't do anything. Why do, I have, to teach my, why do I have to teach my child that? And I think my, that's the, my the part right there. Sorry, uh, not, to cut you off, not to cut you off. I think that's the part right there is that even if you do, even if your son does do everything that you just said, something still can happen to him. Definitely. You've seen right. that. So I think that's where we're kind of, it's the, we're kind of lost that like we follow we, we we try to follow everything we have our own little guidelines that we as black men or as uh people of color uh just live by like don't do this don't talk back make sure when you talk to uh going to the store you just go get what you want they're probably going to follow you around to see if you're still in it's just a lot of things that we like ryan said when we go out the house we're already on 10 trying to protect right. ourselves so we can get back to the house. And right. even now, even when you're in the house, something can happen. So 
I mean, yeah. with, with my girlfriend right now, like, she don't, when we go outside the barbecue, she don't even want me playing music. Like, I mean, <laughs> we almost in the backyard with, with headphones on while our neighbors <laughs> are, are, writing, are blasting their music. So I have to listen to their music and we over here just being quiet. It's like, That's bad. Don't say nothing. <laughs> like, and like, the first time she told me, I got upset. I got frustrated. Like, you know, I we live here too. Right, but with right. everything going on, like, we have two kids, two teenage boys in here. Like, we don't want to bring anything in. So it's hard to, you, you're trying to live your life the way you want to live it, the way you see other people living it. But then you're reminded that you, you kind of can't. Exactly. So let me ask you, you said, like, with everything going on, obviously we're speaking in the height of um, sort of a, a charge. Um, that's happening, but was it ever different than this? Was there a time, was it that it was better? Has it gotten, I mean, I know it may ebb and flow, it's not necessarily necessarily linear, but has it gotten worse from some point? For me, I think it's been the same. I think I said earlier that we're just seeing it more uh, with, with cameras and all the videos that we're getting now. But even with that, when I see it, Sometimes, like, it's just like, man, that, that's that's fucked up. I'm sorry for everybody that was involved. I'm sorry for the family. And then you just try to keep on pushing. But I think with this George Floyd, I think it's just been an accumulation of everything that's happened that made this one just kind of pop and, and kind of get to where we're at now. But I don't think it's changed. I think this has been happening. I think we're just seeing it more. And usually as... I'll just speak for myself. Usually I'll just see it and be like, damn, and and feel bad for a little bit and, and, and then try to get my day going and, and trying to to stay out of that, try to protect myself, kind of. Yeah. Right. I just think, like, it's, it's, it's just here. It's not going away no time soon. We can tell our kids to, to, to listen to the cops and, and, and do everything, but that still doesn't guarantee you that you're gonna leave this house and come back and, and, and be okay. So that's true. Just, that's true. it's just a messed up situation. So but like you said, to, la to elaborate on what you said, oh, it's just being publicized more, you know? Yeah. Thank God for these cell phones. Mm -hmm. be because yeah. now people are really starting to see what's been going on and, and what's been happening. To, to people and no, it hasn't gotten better. Uh, and actually it got a little worse, if you want to ask me. Yeah. Uh, because there was a time when I was able to play that play up and down the street in white neighborhoods and black neighborhoods. You just had yeah. to be careful. When you know was what, I mean? that? what time period? Uh 82. <laughs> 80s, 90s. <laughs> it, was, it was like April, April 4th through April 10th, 1982. <laughs> no, it's, 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 and, and it's, I think that's like I said, it's, it's just being more publicized now, you know. Yeah. And and it's 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 sad, but you 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 got to stay safe. And like you said, you you look at it, uh, oh. And, mm -hmm. and you, you just try to shut it out and move on, you know? Yeah. But at, at some point, well, at, not at some point now, these kids are not just looking at it, shutting it out anymore. These kids right. are standing up saying, you know, enough, enough. A young lady in my neighborhood had a sign that said, our ancestors might have taken it, but we ready to fight back. You right. know? Right. And, yep. and it's scary for them because some of them might not make it home because of that, mm -hmm. you know? So, but it, it seemed like they were ready and willing, so. Yeah. And it's hard that, I mean, like, as kids, like you just said, that we were outside playing in the streets. And I, and I want to, I want to do it. And it kind of like, send the kids out, go take, go, go to the park, walk to the store. Like, you want to do it because that's a, how you were raised. And, Correct. and luckily you made it back. But Amen. at the same time, you're like, you're, you're scared to do it. I'm scared to tell them to go outside in the front and play. I'm scared to do it. My kids can't. <laughs> I, I, I feel you. They cannot. You know, where you, we, we were talking this, the, this part of the conversation a lot 
just recently now we're talking a lot about the the police brutality and the overt fear that you guys have to go through every day and earlier you were starting to talk tracy about the importance you started by sharing about the importance of um, establishing financial independence correct and so i'm wondering if if how do the two of those play together like let's say you could snap a finger and say that there was the black owned banks there was a lot more financial dependence there was less of the um, suppression of income in that area do you think the police brutality would stop and vice versa let's say there's reform there's a lot less police brutality and all that do you think that would open up the opportunity for a, more of this financial depend independence which is a, maybe a little bit more of a long-term solution i guess do do these play into each other or do you think that they're um correlative or causal factors in the overall you know story well i don't, I don't think they're fit together in in, in any way the, the financial financial uh independence that would just allow us to to spend in our own neighborhood to build us up you know and no i don't think police brutality would stop that stop that or stop at that point it, uh because if you don't have officers that look like me again then why why would they stop when they're like you said there's no consequence to what's going on you know and and i truly believe these these rogue officers or these officers that's unhappy in their job with the uh, uh, uh the, the black community have a deep-seated wrong and within inside themselves you know so i don't know i don't think that would change it at all but i think it would allow us to get more justice if that makes sense okay now i have the means to go out here and get an, get an attorney to say hey look this is what happened this that and the third from a b and c now you're gonna now you're gonna find some of these cops actually having to pay the consequences for what they act for their action because i have the finances to pay for if, if that does that make sense yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. it makes a lot so, of sense I, I don't i don't think the brutality would stop but i think the consequences uh, of their actions would be a whole lot uh, more harsh if that makes yeah if that makes sense. so you know there's there's um a lot of there's like a list there's a list of things that we could look at um where there's um whether it's um racism or brutality or like we talked earlier i can just look on a on a sheet and look statistically at things mm -hmm. i can look at the statistics of the higher rates of incarceration the higher rates of a lot of of diabetes the higher rates of covid um the higher rates of broken homes, um, the higher rates of government subsidies, obviously the higher rates of police brutality. Correct. There's a lot of these things for you guys. Um, well, are, I beg to differ one of those. That government subsidies, I think there's a majority whites. <laughs> In terms of, of percentage of percentage of, of population? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I believe that one. Yeah. Because I I don't know too many lazy black folk. If you give them a job, they're gonna go work. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so that's that's really important, right? Because that's also that's really so that's because the narrative correct that we're being told correct. is not that. Right. right. And well, look who's look who, who who's controlling the media. So you, you know. So. Um, it, but now this goes back to who's controlling the narrative the people that are that are maybe be on the side of the black community saying we need to do more the ones that the black community is sort of maybe voting for more are the ones that would potentially benefit the most by saying we should increase government support and welfare and all of these sorts of things potentially correct right so that's where um there's the uh possibility and i'm not implying that it's there for 
for all or even many for some, but there is the possibility that there could be some, um, maybe not nefarious reasons, but um, uh, I, I don't know what the right word is that I'm looking for, but there's there's sort of villainous. What that? Villainous. I mean, there is sort of you know <laughs> ulterior motives. I guess is is that's what I'm looking for. Right. right. The Sono yeah. guy, he definitely has that in his heart. The one that the one that's that's supporting and paying these anarchists. You know, and that's where it's like I I I want things to change. And I'll I'll, I'll give an I'll give an analogy because it'll help me to, to to make sure I get my point clear, my question clear. A lot of people take certain medications for certain things. And my thought with medication is that if you take medication, it's supposed to make you feel better. Now, if you're taking a medication for something and you've been taking it for four or five years and it's not working so much that you, that your doctor has to actually give you more medication or a different medication. And we see this with a lot of different things, a lot with depression and anxiety and those sorts of things. My thought is not about being anti-medication. My thought is, well, you know what? Maybe what you're doing isn't working. Maybe you should try something different. If what if the cycle you've been going through is not helping and you're actually getting worse, you should try something different. Right. And so what is the cycle? Not to point fingers or to say blame, but to try to actually get to the heart of it, of what is the cycle that the black community is contributing to or continuing to persist to do the same thing over that potentially is allowing or supporting the same things to keep cycling. It's the mind state. It's like the mind state. I tell people all the time, like the mind state of younger black kids is that they're not ever going to be anything. And like, you know, most black people was born with that notion that, oh, we can't be more than, you know, an athlete or a rapper or, you know, a janitor or something like that. Because you see, you know, just like how I was saying, you get programmed, you know, from, from birth through all this, whether it's on TV or through your parents or through society, you know, you're programmed to operate a certain way. And with our people, you know, we're honestly the only people that have ever truly been broken and truly been kind of pitted against each other. And, you know, just like the whole slave mentality of you have, you know, the house slave and then you have the field slave where we basically been pitted against each other for so long that we've actually just that mentality has kind of been programmed into us. And a lot of us follow that. And you know, for the people that have actually woken up, they don't necessarily follow that narrative anymore. They try to educate their kids to be more like, oh yeah, we need more doctors and lawyers and we need to be in higher positions of power. And you know, just with the whole financial uh, thing, uh, it goes back to Black Wall Street. If we actually had financial independence, you just think of it as a small business level or something like that. If you have a white business and then you have a black business, right? Uh, whoever's business is doing better, that's what the people are going to go to. But even then, you still have your business. But once you have your business, you start getting more power because through popularity or through the financial gain. And then through the financial gain, you're able to have more power. Once you get more power, then we can start putting in more policies that benefit us or that are actually the equal the playing field. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what the cycle is. It's it's a mentality that we have that we really need to break. You know, and a lot of us are trying to break that. You know, you see us we're we're young dads and I know Trace is a little bit older, but you know, we're all dads and we have kids that are young and we're trying to teach them to be better in this world and to operate different. Like we're trying to teach them to have a different mentality that you can be something in this world and you don't have to just, you know, subject yourself to uh, 
being an athlete or being an entertainer, you know? So that's kind of where we have to break that cycle is the mindset. Do you, is there any pushback within your community of going down that path of some sort of like, you know, integrating, so to speak, in a negative way that it's like, just do your work, get a good job, you know, go up the social ladder or the financial ladder or do that. Is there, is there a, a dialogue that is against that within the community? Yeah. And what, is, what, what is it? What did they, why, why is there opposition to that? I mean, there's, there's always dialogue against it. I mean, sometimes you can get in at school, you know, you have, have your friends that like, they're not so smart and they see you <laughs> as a threat because you're smarter than them, you know? Uh, so they kind of look down upon you because you're trying to better your life or you're, they, I guess, in a sense, they don't see their life going in that direction and they see that you're moving your life in the right direction and it's kind of what they want but they don't have kind of the discipline to put in the actual work for it so therefore their their natural instinct is just to hate you know to hate on you. and we have a lot of that that goes on or their home life may be a little worse than yours yeah. or they may not have that home guidance to understand that change can come, that that you can do better, you know. So and and a lot of that uh, happens, you know. Like I said, I, I put my son where he is for a reason. And don't get me wrong, he he still gets it, you know. One of his friends, uh, the 16 years old, got a brand new BMW for his 16th birthday. You know what my son got for his 16th birthday? A pair of tennis shoes. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You can drive one of my vehicles to school, you know, and. But but that's and and he got he got called a couple names his first year there, but I I tell you what they realized they weren't gonna push his buttons, they they weren't gonna make him get out of character per se, you know because when you go to school you know, you're not black Todd you're Todd, when you come home you can be whoever you choose to be but when you go there you're there representing a group of people that's no longer here you're representing a higher level of people that's no longer here. So you carry yourself as a young man and such that you know you will be the best. I think I think in the past, like when I was growing up, it might have been, I think I went to a prep school, I think my eighth grade year. So like I would go back home and like my cousins would call me Carlton, like talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think back in the day, it was some type of pushback in the community when other children were doing things outside of sports and outside of some type of entertainment in their own black community, they were looked at to be different. Like even with growing up when like some of my friends would play music or play instruments, which used to happen a lot in the past, but now it, it kind of fell off. But you right. would look at those people a little different when they would be like, I gotta go to piano practice or I gotta go to tap pra practice or, or whatever. But mm -hmm. now, like, seeing my son growing up, people are, I mean, it's, like, you want to get good grades. You want to be a little bit different. It's almost, they look at you funny now if you play sports sometimes. Like, why right. are you, like, they're looking at them, like, why are you over there playing playing football when you can get hurt from it or, 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 or something like that? So I think it's kind of switched. I think nowadays these kids are, are trying new things and, and getting out the box, and they're not being judged for it. Hmm. Yeah, Let me ask that's you why something. I think the difference is going to come from these kids. Yep, makes sense. You see what I'm saying? I truly believe that difference is going to come from these kids. So what are we, how, I mean, how far are we away from seeing some actual, real, systemic, noticeable change? Are we, is this, is it got to be a generation? Does it have to be 20 yeah. years? You know, I mean, I, it, I feel like you guys, I know it's like, it just feels like we're, we're so close. There's like a purge coming and maybe not, maybe it doesn't feel that way, but like for you guys, but like you said, OJ, that it's just coming to the surface more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't, 
you can't confront your demons if they're living in the shadows. And, you know, it's just like cleaning out your closet. You know, you open mm -hmm. your closet and then everything comes flooding out. And now you have a, a mess. But now you can actually do something about it. Right. And so it, it seems like we're coming to a point and I mean, shoot, man, you, you guys would know better than I would and Tracy a little bit better than de these guys. Has there been those moments when it was like, oh, this is the moment when things are going to change? You know, was this is the moment when yeah. things are going to change? Like how, that, and that cycle just keeps perpetuating. Well, you always have hope. Mm -hmm. And and I think right now that's all it is, is hope. Uh, I, like I said, I don't think I'm going to see change, but I hope my children will see change. You know, I, I don't know if it'll be there. I'm hoping it's closer, but I have hope. Yeah, I have hope. But I tell you what, if this if these guys don't get convicted of murder, <laughs> it's gonna be a whole lot of less hope. Because <laughs> uh, that, and, and that's that's what injustice comes in. You have to give us justice. You have to you have to at some point treat us fairly. And just to just to get off the subject for a minute, a young black woman sent her child to a school out of district, and you have these college scandals. She has money, so she gets 14 days in jail, but the young black mother who sent her kids to another school district gets five years. That's not justice. Mm -hmm. that, that, and those are the things that need to change for it to be changed, if that makes sense. And Tracy, speaking to that, I just saw some today, and I think you see it more often, where they put the same crime for the same crime between two individuals so yes. a black guy and a white guy, same exact crime, almost the same age. And the right, sentencing right. is so different. Like we're getting, like Tracy said, we're getting years in jail and they might just get probation for the right. same yes. exact thing and the same judge. Yes. So I think to kind of go back to what you were saying, and I think we're going to destroy and rebuild. And I don't know how long that is going to take, but everything from the criminal justice system to police, just everything. It's going to have to be destroyed and, and rebuilt in some type of way where it's, it's equal or we got a better, uh, it's more fair to, to Black America. Right. Well, I truly th think they should do away with lifetime uh, appointments to all those things. The senator, the judges, yeah. everything. Get, yeah. Do away with that. Vote somebody in every four years or every three years. Make it however many you want, but year. get rid of it. This is this is this is what the problem is. Get some new blood in there. Allow somebody else to get in, there, you know. And if that person is e easily swayed to do what they what the what the one percent want them to do, then so be it. Then we we go vote again. But actually, make this vote for the people, you know. Not like the presidency, you know what I mean? Where where our vote is just a a, a vote. That, that goes in the, as they say, yeah, it, wow. it's it's wild, you know. But I think they should do away with that. I I just think that's where a lot of it comes from. Because you look at, I'm 90 years old. I'm on a on a bench. So I was raised with racism. I already know I hate you. I hate you. I want to lynch you from the, as soon as you come in the courtroom. Exactly. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to listen to you. You black. I'm white. I know. Oh, you hurt this white woman. 35 years. Yeah. You know. What did you do? I stole a nine dollar piece of candy, and you know, like the man that's doing life for the nine dollar, uh, uh, he stole a nine dollar piece of uh, junk from the store, and he's doing life. And this was, uh, it's listen, I don't know. I think they got to do away with that. You should not be able to serve your lifetime and anything because you get old, you get senile. Look at President Trump. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. But I mean, you get see now, you, you you lose a little, you lose some things. You know, I forget some things, and I'm not even that old. You know, you, you can't do that. It, it, it's not working. So these are things that, um, some of these are systemic things that we're talking about, um, and kind of large scale sweeping things, whether it's with um, the judicial system or the police force or the criminal justice system and all these things. Is there anything that the white America, the regular people like me and all the other folks that like, 
want to make things better, like genuinely. And, you know, protests. Uh, what's up, Kenny? <laughs> Damn, Kenny. <Kitty. laughs> <Hey, what up? laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> What's <Well>, good? <laughs> You finally in there, man. I see your arms and got smaller, man. I was gonna, yeah. You, oh my god, man. You got to put the camera on the widescreen so that we can see your arms. You got to, you got to go on the the horizontal <laughs> version. Okay, man. Five, five. He, he, he oh, so, so so fellas, man. <laughs> what did I miss, man? Tell me what did I miss? <laughs> you missed too much. We didn't miss nothing. <laughs> we, we didn't get in, we didn't get any of the good stuff. Damn, my bad. Just a whole bunch of eye jammies, KP. A whole bunch uh, of eye jammies. Eye jammies. He's like, man, I give you an eye jammy, and you don't stop that. <laughs> well, I tell you, man, you um, you came in. We, I mean, there's so much. It's like this is so good and it's really great, Tracy. I'm really happy that you could you could join this conversation. Um, we talked about a lot of stuff, Kenny, and it's good to see you, man. Um, I uh, I was just gonna ask, like we we covered a lot of stuff and and we continue we will continue to, but what you guys like if you could just right now have like like a megaphone or or get into the head like. Literally all of just the rest of white America could just hear you right now. And it said like, what should we do? What, how can we help? You know, like, yeah, we talk about reform or breaking down or, or the senators or the judges. Yeah, what can I do right now that would be of the most support right now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know if I heard Tracy say it, but my girl's been saying it for like since this started. Like, if you see something happening, then say something. Try to stop it from happening. Same thing that you would do if you saw something happen to a little kid or a dog or anybody else. If you see some some type of injustice happening, then then speak on it and try to stop it. Simple yeah, as that. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I think yeah, I think we face um, uh, a, a couple different worlds and society um because you can take you know as all of us are speaking here we, we all we're all in athletics correct so in athletics it's like the, the biggest hypocrisy is in athletics because everyone comes together and root on athletes no matter the skin color or beliefs religion for a touchdown point whatever but then at the same time outside the sports realm they won't step in as OJ said to stop injustice um, you know it, it, it's like you know it goes both ways if, if a white guy can go down and, and root for uh, a black football player a black NBA player but doesn't approve of his daughter dating a black guy that is that is insane mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's insane yeah. So it's like two worlds, like the sports world, the guy will root on for his team full of black guys, or a guy will root on his team for a bunch of white guys, but don't approve for his daughter, his family members to hang around or support that race. To me, that's just, it's two worlds. And if the athletic world can kind of like take over society, if you think about it, right, the locker room is where you don't see any of this type of stuff. You know, the, right. the sports playing field, everybody's together. And, you know, I think the athletes, athletics have to kind of pour over to the whole society because, you know, athletics is the number one platform where everybody just plays with each other, gets along. You're right. What about you, Brian? What do you think? What What's, what's one thing that, like, just regular, regular people – can can just do. Um, OJ's talking about like you see something, say something. Kenny's talking about find more more social things, basically sports or whatnot, just to come together and bring these two worlds together. Um, what do you think? I just think uh, 
I think white America needs to educate themselves a lot more, you know, just on the fights of, of the black community. Because, I mean, you you see, like, just simple with the, hey, what's going on? Simple with the thing that Drew Brees said, you know, and the argument that he was kind of making. And it's like, at a point like this, you can't really make that argument because, like, first you have to know what black people are asking for and what they're fighting for first and foremost, you know? And it's like, we're fighting for equality, and that's that's it. It's like, we're not asking for more. We're not asking for, you know, you to change the complete set of rules. It's more just, we just want equality, you know? And for the fact that, like, most white folks, I like, I even talk to white people about, you know, so just a simple subject like blackface, and they don't even know what I'm talking about, you know? And I'm like, well, I mean, you're like, 50 so how do you not know what blackface is and i know about that and it just kind of that kind of shows me that there is a complete separate like uh there's a complete separate like or a complete disconnect between the cultures because there's black history and then there's white history and then there's Asian history, like every race got their own history and stuff like that. But then there's also just American history, like for the region. And like, I just noticed that, you know, uh, a lot of like white Americans try to kind of oppose that history or try to hide it. They don't really want to talk about it because, you know, it's a, it's a sore subject. It's like an eyesore for them. So they don't want to look at that aspect, but they want to look at, you know, oh, this is when the country was great. And it's like, well, the country really has never been great because people haven't had equality. You know, if you have something like slavery going on and people are literally getting lynched and that was the way of life and that was like normalcy back then, like something's wrong with that. If, if you know, just as a human being morally to be able to like look at that and be like, you know what? that's okay it just something's wrong with that you know because even there was a lot of people back then that were saying you know what that's not a that's not okay and they were looked at as oh you're the opposing factor to the agenda that we're trying to put forward mm -hmm. so i just think that more education that you know and i wouldn't just say uh just white people but just people need to educate themselves because you got a lot of black people that don't really know about their history or don't know the things that make us great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I, mean, I, I, I also think it's the acceptance of the of the phrase white privilege. When right. people hear white privilege, they think you're a bad white person. That is false. White privilege doesn't mean you're a bad white person. Right. White privilege means that you're just not held back by the color of your skin. That's all that means. You can have white privilege. You could be a you could be a, a great human being, and you could be a white person, but you can still have white privilege. They take white right. privilege like, oh, I'm, I'm offended. I'm not what, like that's not a. I mean, that doesn't say if you're bad or good. It's just white privilege means you're just not held back by the color of your skin. That's all. That's all it means. And until uh, that part of society of America accepts that and understands that the other the other races have been playing catch up because of you know being oppressed for so long. You know they will understand you know the frustrations and all that. And it's just like we could all go to the movies and watch Star Wars and understand like oh we understand why they rise up against this and this, but then we can't understand why people are rising up against racism. It, it makes no fucking sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, well, well, that movie was great, man. I, I love how they just came together and fought against the empire. And all. Like, <laughs> that's the fuck what they're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know that. Well, that brings up two things. One, um, I want to ask about white privilege, but first, I, it, it makes me think about this meme that I've been seeing a lot of memes, but the one that, that I saw that really kind of stood out was they they showed a picture and it showed some violent. Uh, 
protest and it was like why can't they just protest peacefully and then it showed a picture of people taking a knee like cap and some other people's like no not like that and then it showed a picture of lebron wearing i can't breathe shirt and said no not like that and it showed, <laughs> like six different peaceful protests it's like no not like that no not like that no not like that so it's like what is really caught between the rock and a hard place um but i wanted that so white privilege that's a really it's the first time um, that that got brought up in this conversation. Although I did, I actually, I mentioned it earlier to say that I absolutely am not aware of the privilege I have until I see it put up against someone who doesn't have that privilege. Correct. You know, nobody who has food on their table every day of their lives recognizes how privileged they are until they see somebody who doesn't have food on their table. Correct. And we all try to teach our kids. I, I, I do not let my kids eat before they say thank you. They got to thank something because not everybody gets that, but still not until they see it. So how do we, it's, you know, people can learn about it. And then a lot, like what I hear just chatter, it's like, great. I am white. What am I supposed to do about it? You know, mm -hmm. what, what, what do I do with it? Um, I, I think uh, what you do with it is, uh, as what OJ and Brian have said, because you're not an evil or bad person, you know, educate your family, your friends, uh, your coworkers, those who may question um, why black people are protesting this way, who question why black people may want to feel like they're being held back or, you know, like, well, th there's nobody here that was in this century that were slaves. There's nobody, there's no white person alive right now that has, that were slave owners. Yeah, a hundred percent correct. But understand that all, all that time, it's like, it's like starting a race, Iran, right? If, if OJ and I race, but we give OJ an hour start and you'd be like, all right, Kenny, now it's your turn. It don't matter how fast I run. If OJ is running at that speed, he's always going to be ahead of me and have the better opportunities. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what the white privilege is. They don't, they don't understand that. So what we need to do is, as you guys are so ahead, all you got to do is educate those. Like, hey, man, these, these guys aren't that bad. We just, they just need a little help to catch up. That's it. We're no. just asking for help. Right. So to that, that's a great, it's a great analogy. So let's, let's, let's run with that. No pun intended. So I am, I got a head start, you know, um, I got a, whatever it is with, because of the color, you know, I was born with a head start with where, with where I'm born. And right. now it's come to my attention, like, whoa, that's, that's kind of not fair that I didn't realize that the, I'm getting all the good stuff because I just, I'm getting there first because this other person got such a late start behind me. And then I think, well, that, that's not, that doesn't seem right, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but now what do I do? Do I, do I, using that analogy, do I slow down? Do no. I let that person pass me? Like how, do, what is the functional thing that I can do to create the equality in that imbalanced situation that I was just, you know, fortunate enough to start. Ahead. Yeah. So I think I Kenny might have said it. I think, yeah. and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he said like, have you have conversations with people that are around you and, and let them know, you know, these people are, are trying to catch up and, and what can we do to, to kind of get them to where we're at? So it might mean hiring somebody or just what you're doing now mm -hmm. is having these conversations. I think it all mm -hmm. comes from, communication conversations and just uh just seeing what other people are where other people are coming from and realizing the right privilege that you have and then having those conversations those real conversations yeah yeah i agree Doug, you, you shouldn't slow down um but as you're so far ahead you know or whoever's so far ahead you know educate that the guy that's all the way back there is is fighting so hard, you know, you know, on hands and knees to get every scrap of opportunity that it's our duty now that we were so far ahead, even though, you know, like that's not a direct reflection of you, but you know, now that we're so far ahead, it's our duty now to make sure that we don't extend the gap of the gap that we already have. 
So if OJ, if OJ is way ahead of me for an hour, it's, and he now notices and accepts what's going on, it's his duty to say, I'm not going to turn that hour gap into a two hour gap. Right. Now I got to do whatever I can to shorten the gap. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's his duty. So I want to run with that. So, and obviously conversation is the first thing that has to happen. Conversation, communication, education, to become aware of it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then what, what are some things that you would ideally, like, what would you hope to see come from that conversation? So, oh, you mentioned one thing you said, maybe like be more um, conscious about hiring and mm-hmm. things like that. What are some other things like that? that that like just a regular dude every day could put I got the perfect answer for that a regular dude every day open up a book educate himself about why there's a big gap a- educate his kids why there's a big gap you know let, let's take our kids to this community and learn what's going on why there's a big gap you know what part you know ancestors have that we don't want to repeat this process um it's happening now there's people protesting you know, not 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 just standing back and understanding like, hey, it's not directly affecting me, but it's affecting others. And then the, the biggest quote that I, I tell people I, is, uh, that I see is the change will not be made until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are point blank. So if you mm-hmm. teach that and say, no, yeah, yes, I, I, I'm not the person doing these things, but if it doesn't affect me to see that these guys are continuously held back, then I'm part of the problem. So unless I want to make a change, I need to be just as outraged that it's happening mm-hmm. to them, even though it's not happening to me. Where you do I? I'm saying? Absolutely. And I, I, um, you know, I, I, don't, I remember MLK said, I don't remember the direct quote, but essentially that if you are a bystander to the evil, you're just as much as a perpetrator. You know, that's Co- the- correct. But everything is a learned behavior, Ron. If you think about it, everything is a learned behavior. I'm glad you brought up MLK. When MLK got assassinated, I probably how, how long did it take for Kennedy to put in the civil rights stuff? Do you know how long? Well, uh, well, Kennedy, let's see. Kennedy uh, ML, uh, K, oh, I mean, oh, LBJ? Yeah, I think it was LBJ. It was LBJ. So the sim- I'm talking about Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm when just he was assassinated. It took eight days of protest for for a change to be made in legislation and policy. From af- after you're saying after he was assassinated. Assassinated. So this is this is a learned behavior. Uh, American society has taught those who are underprivileged and feel that they're being oppressed that. The only way they're going to get answers is for them to act in this manner. You see what I'm saying? It shouldn't take right. eight days of protest for a, a peaceful black man to, to get assassinated to be like, all right, these guys are getting kind of crazy now. Let, let, let's just do what they say. Why are you right. here before? So this is a learned behavior. You could go back in time over and over again. It's like nuts till shit starts getting <laughs> fucked up. So... If, if you if, if you make those changes before this, you would never get there. You know what I mean? So right now we're at the George Floyd situation. What happened before the George Floyd? Ahmad thing, right? Witness Ahmad mm-hmm. get shot, right? And we didn't get that video out until three months later because he got shot in February. There was no riots then, right? There was no riots then. Why there was no riots? because something will happen in a curve, correct? But now you get to George Floyd, and then now you're separating, like, okay, well, um, this happened. Let's make yeah, this excuse why it's happening. Saying where we're the, right. And it's like, come on, you can't do that. And the biggest cop-out, I, trust me, I have, I have all respect for cops, but the biggest cop-out that I see is Blue Lives Matter. Now, you know what I'm going to tell you why? Yeah. There's, <laughs> such, there's no such shit as Blue Lives Matter. Where, where can you check a box that you're blue? For an right. employment or in, in a census, you can't be blue. The people who are cops are black, brown, white people. They're right. all lives matter. So when you say blue lives matter, you're just creating another shield, another that that whole systematic oppression to protect mm-hmm. them from what they're doing. Blue lives matter. There's no such thing as blue lives matter. 
they can't go home and take off blue skin. I mean, what the hell is that? Blue lives matter. So that means, Brian, what, what kind of, what are you wearing? Light blue? So he should go out and be like, oh, baby, blue lives matter. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. <laughs> it's an occupation. It's an occupation. You can't stand behind those things. You know what I mean? So if, if a black guy's a cop, he's no longer black lives matter. He got to be, he got to, he got to select blue. If a, if a white guy wants to protest and go for, you know, what's going on, he got to be like, I got to stand behind this. Shit, this. So what about, um, what about all lives matter? Uh, nah, he ain't, uh, I like. Oh, the, oh, the all lives matter. I mean, that kind of like, like we understand that, but, even when people say that, that's still like an anti-protest to the Black Lives Matter protest. Because, you know, people can say all lives matter as much as you want. We know that all lives matter. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody whole, nobody said nobody said all lives didn't matter. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> the whole thing that with the Black Lives Matter is like we're the ones that are the targets right now. And yeah. we're trying to say our life matters. You know what I'm saying? We're, like we're the ones in danger, right? You know, blue li- you know what blue lives matter to me when they say that, Aaron? It says, "Hey, there's one house on the block that's on fire. And right? The fire truck got called. Should the fire truck spray water on all the houses before the the one that's on fire, or right. skip all those houses and focus on the one that's on fire? Right. Well, exactly. all, all houses matter, but the shit's <laughs> right. on fire. Right. Take the fire right. Out. Yeah. Hey, brothers, brothers, it's nice talking to y'all. I gotta get off now. It's getting late out here. Cool. Oh man, it's great to be with you, OJ. It was good. I'm down for the next one, Aaron. Just let me know. Do it. Let's see, yeah. Brian, KP, all right, you guys all, all love. Stay up, man. Keep up with the cold. Hey, Tracy said brother. peace. Well, oh, tell him good to meet him too. Yeah. Did Sean, did Sean ever get on here? No, he, Sean said he was still, he was actually feeling um, a bit charged with everything. He didn't feel mm. uh, ready to, to come share, like, sort of publicly. Uh, also, and I think you, it, you can see this on the Zoom, but we started this before, Kenny. I'm, I'm just streaming this to my Facebook, too. It's, I mean, it's like six people watching it right now, but just so you know, <laughs> in case you didn't know... It's really, again, like I said, the intention is just that, like, we talk about having an open conversation, right? So, mm-hmm. and that's what it's about. That's the, what I come back to ultimately, like, the starting point, you just have to acknowledge things. You have to just, to be able to bring them to the service, to talk about it, to see it. And so, look, if one person catches two minutes of this conversation, it's better than that than if they didn't. So, right. you know, whatever it may be. You know, I heard that. Yeah, but 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 it's all about unity and, and coming together, and you know the fact that you're doing this. This is a step in the right direction. You know, yeah. n- nobody promotes violence. Nobody promotes all this stuff. You know, it, it's about coming together. You know, uniting as one, um, all fighting for the same thing. You know, and you know, just representing what you know America is supposed to be. We all. I don't think there's any genuine, really evil, bad people. You know, it's just people make bad decisions. People are jaded or brought up a certain way to believe certain things. Me. <laughs> His phone keep cutting off. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> no, nah, go ahead. No, nah. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, I just feel like, off. I see that picture yeah. you show up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little more part pictures pop up. Yeah, so I, I just feel like, you know, uh, you know, I'm always preaching unity. I'm always preaching togetherness. I'm always preaching, you know, we need to, you know, help each other out, get through these rough times and all that we do. I understand everybody's frustration. I'm not in a position to, um, you know, tell somebody how to, you know, feel or, you know, why they're going through what they're going through. But, you know, all I can do as a, as a leader, and as a leader of, you know, young people in the community is continue to preach unity, continue to preach togetherness and, you know, sticking together and, and you know, making things right. Because I think you're going to get more accomplished doing that than not doing that, you know. And we, we keep getting jaded by the stuff we see on the news that everything is negative and negative. But, you know, in my personal experience, I mean, you know, I've been around a lot of 
you know, great white people that have done a lot of great things for me. So, and it's my duty to also preach those things, those positive things and go, hey, the stuff you see on TV that's occurring by, you know, this uh, population of white people doesn't mean that you put everybody in the same box because, I, you know, I've received opportunities and, and things like that for the great white men and great women in my life who helped me along the way. Mm-hmm. So it's my duty to also educate, you know what I mean? And I think the more we educate on the good part, yeah, right. I think, you know, we do the right thing. You know, and to that, man, we, we had a pretty good conversation a little bit earlier. And I would, I believe, I, I believe the same thing as you. I mean, shoot, man, from, from your, my heart to your mouth, like you're speaking this truth. And so there is th- this knowing, we know absolutely that the majority of people are good people. And like the majority, the major not all, but like are the majority of people aren't even socialized so much to like that they're they're okay. They they want equality. They want everybody to be feel good. They want unity. They want peace for the most part. And obviously, there's a lot of learned things to pull them away from this. And yet we see the same cycles happening over and over and over again. And we we had a long conversation to talk about how there's so much division and this is divide and conquer and as long as there's a divide and conquer then the the powers that be will continue to to control and it doesn't seem so much it's not a black white thing or republican democrat or christian Mm. muslim or jews versus christians or gays versus straight but it's power versus people and as long as the people don't come together, then there's not never going to be that that the powers can continue to do what they do, and then create these diversions and distortions that we blame each other for our problems. So, what can we do to break out of that cycle? How can we become aware of of that cycle to recognize that, you know, what if the people that are feeding us are actually the ones that are keeping us down. That's a good question. You want to you want to speak on that, B? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, that's basically uh, he. Well, he's saying how do we how do we break that cycle of them doing can I, that? Can I give you an Can I give you an example? And this is not about this is not about um, the brutality so much, but. Um, you know, I, my my whole my whole world my whole worldview started to open up when I started to understand food better, and and the food systems and how what we're, we're being fed, and coming to a place of understanding just how bad for us a lot of this. Like I grew up eating fast food like crazy. I mean, shit, you guys. The only reason I played on that team at Moore Park because we had free free food on the road trips. So <laughs> it was like $12 at Jack in the Box. Are you kidding? Man, I'll sit on the bench for that. I don't, absolutely. So, <laughs> so I'm coming. You used to like going to hometown and Marie calendars and shit. Yeah, I mean, it's the thing I never played because I was always so full. So <laughs> that, so, you know, I'm like I'm coming from that place, but let me, let me get to what I'm saying. I was watching, um, I think it was Roy Wood Jr., the comedian. I don't know if you know him, so good. And he was talking about like, I don't care what, I'm always gonna support McDonald's. I'm always gonna eat McDonald's because of how much they support the black community, because of how much they support the NAACP. And, and, and you know, the crowd it's like, yeah, right on. And then you see that Black people have three times higher rates of diabetes than anybody else. And so that's that's one example, right? But you get where I'm coming from, right? So McDonald's is is stepping up and saying, oh, we're here to help you. We're here to help you. And look at all this good that it seems that we're doing. And yet it could be literally the hands that are feeding this, this group are the ones that mm-hmm. maybe helping to keep them more suppressed and sick. Now take that example, but potentially to a larger scale in to the political realms and whatnot. Um, and that's, you know, 
that's what I'm trying to crack, man. Like what's scarier, a, a wolf or a wolf in sheep's clothing? And it oh. just seems to me that there is these cycles that are happening and there's something that has to, ch I've been hearing, like I say, I'm just talking about from the outside, but the message has been the same. I'm hearing the same thing, like something that is happening that we keep trying to do. We got to think differently. There's like a different thing, you know, like we've been talking about unity for a while and we're still here. The Civil Rights Act, Kenny, was signed 52 years ago. The Emancipation Pro uh, Proclamation was uh, 158 years ago. And here we are today. I'm, I'm hearing from Tracy and from OJ and from Brian, like saying, man, I just, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to see it in my lifetime. I hope it's for my kids. And I'm like, well, how can that be 50 years ago? Right? So what are, what are we doing that is, that is perpetuating this? Um, I mean, I, I think we've, since 50 years ago, we've, I, we've taken steps in the right direction. We're not perfect. I mean, there are things, certain things that are still happening today, maybe not the same magnitude, but you know, we, we are moving in the right the right direction um and i think these protests i mean is is a proof of it because it, there's not only black people out there i mean there's all races out there pro protesting you know and i think right that that shows you you know that the generation and you know 50 years ago we definitely you know moving in the right direction now to answer your question what can we do we need to do put the right people in power we have to uh, be led by the right people who, who breathe unity, who want to pass policies and laws that are going to represent unity and, and, and things like that, and, and put things like that in place. So, you know, it comes down to those things. The, those who are in power who, you know, have the power to put policies and legislations and, and have that voice, um, you know, to a nation of people, need to you know breed unity and to put things in place that are going to allow you know us to continue to move in the right direction and not go backwards and not you know do these things you know and i think that's what it comes down to you know so with that a lot of people now it's it's really easy to point our fingers at at the president um for obvious reasons i don't even like it's easy to do it. And I'm not saying it's not justified. It's <laughs> like it's easy to do it. And, um, you know, the thing is you got, we're talking about long standing issues here, mm -hmm. right? Racism in this country did not start three and a half years ago. Correct. When Trump thought, you know, was, was elected. Um, Black men were still being stomped on and killed in the streets for the eight years that Obama was in office. Correct. Trump exacerbated it. That's what he did. Trump showed that it was okay to do it. So, so to that, did he, uh, and absolutely, right? When he came into office, now uh, all these people feel emboldened to come out and be like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is what I, but is there an aspect of it potentially, and I, I'm not thanking him for this, but is there an aspect that there's almost that it was always there underneath the surface that at least now we know that it's there where before we were just denying it to ourselves to say that there isn't a problem? Well, I, I believe that the kids now finally know it's there and, and white people finally see how bad it is by being recorded, by being shown, you know, if, if Barack Obama would have said, I can go in the middle of the street and shoot somebody and still win, Barack Obama would not have won. You know, so I'm, I mean, it's just being seen more. It's being shown more. And like I said, this this next group of kids that's out there protesting right now, they, they're awake. They're, they're seeing what's happening. They're understanding what's going on. You know, so. Yeah. I yeah, think that's... I, I think, I think... I think it was deeply rooted, Iran. It's been deeply rooted. Um, and, you know, those uh, who really had a strong feeling about those deeply rooted um, beliefs, 
use this inauguration to as an excuse to come out and show it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Um, but I think it's been a, a, a deeply rooted problem for years. As you mentioned, even with a, a black president, you know, it, it was still going on. Um, but, you know, it's just, you know, change, change has to be made and it has to be made through, you know, legislation it has to be made through policies. And, you know, it has to, you know, we have to kind of, you know, come to realization that that is something that's holding this nation back, you know, from being as great as it can be. We live in the greatest, you know, you know, United States is the greatest, but I think we can be even that much better if we figure out how to overcome this obstacle of racism. Um, and, and the first step is understanding and accepting that it is present and is there and we need to tackle that. Why do you why do you think why do you feel so strongly about our greatness? Um, I, I feel strongly about our greatness because we have in the freedom to have this type of conversation. In other countries, if you have this type of conversation, you and your family are, are killed. That's number one. Um, you know, we're able to get free education, we're able to freely walk the streets, express you know, what's on our minds, our feelings, all, all, all those things, uh, you know, uh, work, I mean, vote, I mean, we have rights, I mean, those, we take all those things for granted, just like, you know, we want to point out other people that, that take things for granted, we, sometimes we just say, you know, we're born with these things, we don't, you know, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be, and, you know, we live in a great nation, a lot of people have fought for this great nation, died for this great nation, and I think, you know, with that said, we could we could take another level of greatness by uh, tackling um, you know those demons of racism. You know, how to that we uh, we, we have a very long standing, uh, very long standing. You know, since the birth of this nation, mm -hmm. issues of racism, obviously that. It's gotten, I mean, it's gotten better from overt slavery, but not mm -hmm. that it's great right now. Mm -hmm. And and yet a lot of these other things that you just mentioned about what makes it so great is, you know, there's truth to a lot of that, but yet there has been this like blatantly horrible, like just unfathomable undercurrent the whole time. Mm -hmm. So do you guys think that there's anything that needs to be done? Like people talk about reparations for one or something like, can we just, can we just kind of say, you know what, let's just call it what it is and try to move forward. Or <laughs> like, are there things that need to be done to like, make up for what has happened up to this point? Uh, there definitely has to be accountability for sure i was like yeah you like some there has to be some sort of accountability for everything that has happened you know not saying that oh we should hold just this one person accountable or this whole race accountable like not speaking on that scale but there should be some sort of admittance or something like, hey, we wronged you guys. You know what I'm saying? And this is what we're going to do because we wronged you. And this is how we would like to see it moving forward. You know, like, because it, it, it it's the same thing when, you know, you have two people that are kind of mad at each other. If they confront the problem and talk about it, then they can reach some sort of common ground or maybe not reach a common ground, but at least they've talked about it. They have some sort of closure to it and they're able to move on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as getting closure to this situation, I don't know if we'll ever reach some sort of type of closure, but you know, as far as like being able to, you know, it's what's right is right. You know what I'm saying? So, it has to get on that level. And I think it starts with, you know, just admitting that there's a problem and admitting that you see the problem and admitting that 
you know, you need to help alleviate the problem and at the same time admitting that you were part of the problem. You know what I'm saying? So there's that in everybody. And, you know, whether people like it or not, we all have a little bit of prejudice in us. You know, that's just natural human nature because of difference. But, you know, it's it's it has to start with people talking about the issue, like how we're talking about it. You know, because whenever people talk about it, it always turns into one big argument. And then nobody can get their point across. It becomes heated and they start to hate each other. And it's like, well, we're right back at the point where we started. So it's like being able to talk about the issue, sympathize with both parties on what they've been feeling because, you know, yeah, I know we're on blast right now. Like our perspective, like the black perspective is on blast and we're, it's being like televised everywhere. But like there's two perspectives, you know, and for the black person to explain their perspective, which we've been trying to do that for years, and it's just we're not, nobody's being sympathetic to the perspective that we have. And at, on the flip side, there is the other perspective of, you know what? we just never cared to see what was going on because it wasn't thrown in our face like it's been thrown in your face, you know? So there's that perspective too. And people just need to understand that and just admit to that, being completely aware of it. And that's where we could start to try to solve the problem. I mean, you know, of course it goes up to like something like Congress. Like <laughs> that's where the problem really gets solved you know, financially and through Congress. But, you know, just on a moral aspect, I think people just need to start talking about it more and kind of curb their feelings, you know? Yeah, yeah uh, for restitution, to be honest, I don't think you can, you know, have restitution or put a monetary value on the years and years of oppression. I mean, even if you go back, our ancestors, would have done cartwheels to be treated the way we are today compared to the way they were treated back in the day. That's just real facts. Come on, I mean, you know? Yeah. So, but that doesn't make it right on how we're being treated. You know, they, they, they sacrifice all that they sacrifice so we wouldn't have to be treated this way. Yeah. And that is what the message that, you know, we're trying to uh, portray. And, you know, we're not saying like, oh, you know, the way our ancestors were treated is the way we're being treated. Obviously, that's not the case but we don't want that all their you know their efforts and lives lost to go in vain mm -hmm. um so i don't know what restitution i don't think you can put a monetary value on you know being treated equally on being oppressed for so many years because then what is the price what's the cost on that now you now you're saying we could be bought you know we could be shut up for you know for a uh, a stimulus check, right? Oh, you know, give them a stimulus check. They won't complain anymore. And that's not what, that's not what it's about. Right. It's a bigger picture. You know, it's, it's, it's more than just us and, you know, this generation, the next generation moving forward. Because again, we all want, we all want to live in this great nation um, and make it, you know, even, even greater. So, I, you know, for restitution, I don't think you can put a monetary value on it because it wouldn't be fair. You know, because some people suffer more than others. What are you going to do? Pay them more? You know, so, you know, it, it's just difficult to put a monetary value on something like that. Yeah. Tracy saying, did Tracy say something? Oh, no, no, no. We, we, Shakir, Shakir, uh, one of our co workers. <laughs> one of our co workers, she in the background said, yeah, uh, she understand about uh, the reparations, not having the reparations. So give me a free education. You know what I mean? So, so let me stop paying taxes for a couple of years. You know, it's no, it's not about the monetary <laughs> issue of it. It's, a, it's about the process. Yeah. It, it's about yeah. what happens. But, but, but once you do that, though, but, once that you do you that, to, huh? but Tracy, think that. So once you do that, then you're, uh, you're basically allowing someone to say, okay, we paid you off. Now be quiet. So you no. can't complain no more. No, no, I no, I I definitely understand that, and and I don't think I don't think you can understand. Not not saying a one time thing, like I'm saying, it's it's just you you, if if you want to make something right, 
you, you got to constantly get better at, if, yeah. if that makes sense. You know, yeah. so I'm not, not saying, no, here's a, a $100,000, Tracy, shut the heck up. Don't say it yeah. again. We don't want to hear you again. No, not at yeah. all. I'm, I'm saying, can, 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 give me something continuous. Give me something that's going to help me uh, step, my, step my game up, for, for lack of a better word, and my family. Like, I, like, I, was yeah. telling, uh, yeah. like I was telling, like I was telling, this is me. Uh, oh, stop eating, not OJ. Uh, Aaron. The, the Aaron. Yeah, like I was telling him, if Black Wall Street was still around, our 1% would be greater than their 1%, I guarantee you. They did that for a reason. And, and I, I truly believe that, like you said, there, there's, there's, something, there's something in the midst, if, if like, for lack of a better comment. You know, there, there is something in the works that's happening right now. But if they want to give reparations, that's a start. And, and I, I, for one, like I said, 51 years old, I'm going to take that reparations and, put, and start a foundation for my children. You know, and just to make sure that they can, that they can continue to get better and get, uh, get some kind of growth. So, no, I'm not begging for anything. I get out here and work hard every day. But you have to acknowledge you did wrong to my family. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, there's there's a there's so much. You guys have. Uh, I think each of you might have said the word acknowledgement or acknowledge at some point. And there is something so metaphysically crucial and essential about the acknowledgement of it, to be able to actually speak truth and bring forth and say this this is actually what happened because, ultimately, an undercurrent of of this and all humans, people just want to actually be seen. They want to be seen and they want to be heard and they and and whether it's racial or not, if any if any of our I think you guys are upside down. You know, <laughs> he the phone. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all good. Um, uh, it's you know if you get if you're in an argument with your partner and like they just don't understand what you're saying and you're just like look just acknowledge you don't have to agree but acknowledge that you understand what i'm saying acknowledge that you see the plight that you see exactly just acknowledge it right and so uh and and there's a lot more I've, I've, that we could we could talk about the, the the absolute necessity crucialness of that and um i have some friends that are very active in 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 this conversation around indigenous rights and that's very strong to them and the needing of acknowledging what we did and there's similar plights there but like, who does that who does that have to come from? You know, like, does does that come? Does it come from the president? Does it come? Can it just happen one off, like one person at a time? Can I, by me just looking at you and saying, I acknowledge what you've had to go through, and my I acknowledge my privilege, and I acknowledge that plight, and like, like how can we do that on a scale that it actually gets received? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, but I mean, I mean, just to be clear, I can agree to disagree with anybody on, a, on everything, on a lot of things, but racism ain't one of them. <laughs> right. Racism ain't one of them. Right. So, I, I'm not in a position to agree or disagree about racism with nobody. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, it, it comes from a lot. I mean... I mean, we, we're just not in control of other people's beliefs and feelings and how they were raised. Um, you know, all we could do is just continue to spread the word. And uh, when we have a platform, to take advantage of that platform and, and uh, you know, breed unity and respect and dignity to all human beings. Definitely. Um, and we hopefully that carries on and that overtakes, you know, those who have that that hate or the ones who didn't have a chance to understand the other side because they were brought up in a household of people who were brought up with hatred, you know, and it's a learned behavior. You know, if you put two children from different races, they're not going to dislike each other. It's a learned behavior. Exactly. You know what I mean? So all this stuff about racism and is, is all learned. It's generation after generation. So um, if we have these uh, people in power who are, you know, who were brought up in those generations where they believe this law shouldn't be passed because we're a superior race or we shouldn't pass this legislation because this is the way it needs to be, then those are the people we need to get out, you know, and those are the people that need to, to kind of get removed 
So those who don't see things that way can be in a position of power and continue spreading the good word. And that's a great point. But as long as there's lifetime uh, uh, placement, there's no one's going to get out. You know what I mean? And I was saying that earlier. We, we got to get these people out because that's what the problem is. These mm -hmm. people were raised in hate. They were taught to hate. And if, if you're, when you're taught something, <clears throat> you, may, you may stray away from it a little bit, but it always comes back to haunt you. you know? and, and they just can't help it. You, you just can't help it. You were taught black is not right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So what, what do you do? If you can't get that person out of office, what do you do? Accept the reparations. <laughs> I, I got to ask you guys something. Um, and Tracy, if you, if you, I don't know if, oh, if you left to get in on this. I just, um, the top. just a couple mm -hmm. days ago, I re-listened to and and I and re actually well I read and and I did a little abridgment of um, of MLK speech uh, his sermon about loving your enemies and uh, and sorry oh it's all good I was just saying I, just a couple of days ago I reread um, MLK's sermon about loving your enemies and uh, it was from fifty seven it's great really powerful and he talked about the the word coming from Jesus that obviously you know that a lot of people think that that they say that and it's just this hyperbole and it sounds great to love your enemies but it's not actually applicable and he was saying no he he's like he wasn't playing around it's real it's very very real and he's like I'm glad that he didn't ask me to like my enemies because I don't like the things that people do to me, but love is greater than like. And that truly the only force, he said, when we have those moments of the time when you can defeat your enemy, that is the time that you must not do it. And, um, you know, it sounds great and it feels real to me. <clears throat> And it feels truthful to me, you know, that hate begets hate. As he said, somebody must have enough morality to be able to stop this cycle. There's a, lot of, a lot of peaceful protests. And there's a lot of people even like, uh, for example, I have some friends that are very, very strong on the left that said, I, let them do whatever they want. Burn it all down. I, it's not my position to say they have every right. So I'm just wondering if you guys have anything to, to say to that idea um, about the violence versus nonviolence, about the, the truly loving your enemy type of thing, no matter how bad it is, to be able to, to find that spark in them and to love them because God loves them, as, as MLK would say. So, so MLK, the guy who said love your enemy, the guy who peacefully protested, was violently killed. Mm -hmm. So again, those who, who hear these things and say, look what happened, again, it's, it's a learned behavior. So, and, but you know. But to that real quick, Kenny, so, were the, so was the guy that he was talking about who, who said it first. And, right. and so was the guy, you know, looking at Gandhi, who was, was the strongest model for him bringing in this nonviolent movement and i don't you know not to to speak not to say i wouldn't speak for him but i would have to say that if you could speak to mlk right now they'd and ask him be like do you want to take that back after what happened to you he'd say absolutely not yeah i i, I don't think he would i either um but so we as, as we're seeing all those things happen we have to understand that this is the sacrifice that's going to be made right? The ultimate sacrifice by continuously saying, I'm going to love my enemy, even though my enemy is out to kill me or out to hurt me. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have to get the willingness of everybody to make that huge sacrifice. So, I mean, how many people are going to continue to sacrifice their life though for this love thy enemy and still not see a change is the question. 
that so that's the question so what so that's what the question do, you do right is it, do you do you abandon that or do you no you i don't think you abandon it i don't think you abandon it but for that to overpower the the hate you have to have more people on who are not affected want to jump on the on the love thy enemy right because there's people who are one side and the other side and the people in the middle are like, well, I really don't care what happens. I'm just going to sit back. That is the issue where those people who are not affected one way or the other need to, you know, kind of intervene and go, you know what? We need to show this enemy that our love is more powerful, you know, and we need to spread the word of love and, you know, unity to overpower the hate where, it, you know, it stops becoming, the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, that was a that was a great way you put that. But I I I, I uh, agree totally. But I also think you need to put respect in there. You know what I mean? That there has to be a mutual respect with the love. And I think uh, Dr. King would have added that into it. You know, you, because if if you don't respect the man you're looking at or you're talking to, you're never gonna love him. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and you know if you know he's not gonna show you any kind of respect, then it, it it's gonna go nowhere. It's, it's on as as they say, it's on deaf ears. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And and that I mean, look, that makes so much sense, right? That that feels like that's applicable, and and yet, you know, he it was the the sermon, and what he's talking about is like in the face of everything, there has to be that, and it it doesn't seem fair. To you guys, you know, to be honest, like, like, why do you have, it's like, man, we've been shit on so much. Why do I, why do we need to be, why do I need to be the bigger person again? But right. it's like, because you have to, you know? Well, it's, it's not that, it's not that we have to, we, we never was the, the, the mean person. You know what I mean? That yeah. we right. wouldn't, we wouldn't, we were never the ones taking over countries, taking over cities. You know what I mean? We, we were the ones there doing what was said, doing what was told, you know? And again, it, it has to be a mutual respect. It has to if, be. If, if love thy enemy is not, to, this, I mean, you got to think about before MLK. I mean, we've been saying love thy enemy since the World War I and World War II, where we were fighting for our country our slave owners freedom to just to come back and be killed and be slaves if that's not love the enemy i don't know what is <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> you I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go fight this war for, for my master right but then when i get back i'm gonna be enslaved and treated like garbage i mean I'm man a, i mean you're right back to being boy come here boy yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. exactly but, but but i'm willing to let, uh, risk my life for my master because I want to love my love my enemy, you know what I mean? So yeah. we've been doing that for so long. Um, and I think we continue to do that. Um, you know, obviously no one's perfect, nobody's perfect. Um, at some point, everybody has a boiling point. Um, and I just think, you know, with these protests you see, you know, there's opportunistic people are, uh, that are, you know, taking advantage of the situation, just like on everything, you know? Um, but but I think the overall message is, you know, this needs to stop. Uh, and, you know, we want to continue to love our enemy. But there were so many sacrifices made to this point that it needs to stop before somebody else has to sacrifice. You know what I mean? I mean, how many people are going to sacrifice until you just get wiped out? Right. I'll tell you, I, I mean, my lineage, we came pretty close to that. <laughs> <laughs> As many as pretty close. I can, you know, I can speak to that. I mean, my, I, not that I've, I haven't, I haven't sniffed it directly, uh, you know, for myself. I mean, I'm in a statistical minority being a Jew, and yet, as there's still a tremendous amount of control about, like we talked about, that was one of the first things, you know, Tracy mentioned in terms of a lot of the 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 Jewish lobby has a lot of power here. So there are people that would look to me as being a place of power, even though I'm a statistical minority, not about being white, but about being Jewish. So there's some, and then now I'm now being a white guy, it's like, well, I got everything. But now I'm on a wheelchair. 
So now I'm a now I'm a disabled guy. So that's a whole other thing. But so anyway, to come back to the point of look, the my my dad um, lost. My dad had eleven um, uncles, and two of them survived the Holocaust. So like half of my family. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is like, you think about the size of that, like literally half of my entire lineage got wiped out 60 years ago. And That's what I'm saying. Ago, something like that. And and there is a point where it's like, if we just, and I am an absolute like proponent, adherent student of the nonviolent movement. But if if it didn't get violent at some point, I wouldn't be here. So like you know we ha- there had yeah. somebody eventually had yeah. to push back with violence for that like sometimes there's there's a some to stop a, it like a cancer that is so violent you know like western medicine and you dude god bless you guys brian and tracy western <laughs> western medicine saved my life period absolutely like and western medicine is very violent we cut you open or we put chemicals in your body. And sometimes that's called for. And some, yeah. and when it is, God bless it that we have the understanding of how to do it. So all that said to bring it back here, when is it called for in this conversation? When is violence okay? You know, is there a point when it's okay? Are we close to that point? Like, or, or does it all blow up from there? Yeah, it's well, a thin line because you never you never want to okay violence because my violence is different than maybe somebody else's violence. You know, right. there's a violence that oh I'm burning a building down or or something or somebody else's violence like I'm going to attack a white person who I don't know and I want to make him feel pain. There's a different type of violence for you know for for a, you know every human being. So but I'll let you speak on that, B. Um, well, I'll say like. I, when it comes to violence, like itself, I don't, I don't really think violence itself is like the answer, but it's, unfortunately, it's one of the things that has to happen in order for certain things to get done when it reaches that point. I mean, you put it in terms of like just disciplining your kid, you know, you tell your kid, hey, stop doing that. And then they don't listen. And then you're like, hey, stop doing that. And they don't listen. Eventually, you're going to have to discipline them some way. And sometimes that comes with hitting them, you know, and that's a form of violence. And it's like, I know that <laughs> I, I, I did anything in my power as a kid to dodge an ass whooping from my dad, you know. And it's like, I, I just knew that that was the point. I knew when I had to listen is when violence came into play. So I guess putting it on a bigger scale of what's happening today, you know, black people have been, you know, like Aaron said, we've been shitting on for years now. You know, we've been trying to peacefully (laughs) say stuff and suggest things and all that. And it's like our voices haven't been heard. So now, you know, some people think that through violence, our voices can now finally be heard. And, you know, it's, it was the same with the revolution. Like, when the revolution happened, it was a whole bunch of violence. And, you know, there was bad that came from that, but there was a lot of good that came from that, too. You know, but even then, the world is the way it is now. But back then, we were able to get something for the revolution, you know, like, even though it wasn't equal, but we at least got something like it was some sort of step, at least that we felt at that time in the right direction, you know? So once again, I don't condone violence, but sometimes violence is necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just think, see, Aaron, it's always, one way towards another. You see, it's like, well, when we do something to you, you guys should love your enemy and not do something back to us. But what happens when the narrative is flipped and it's like, all right, we're going to be the ones to impose ourselves and 
you guys don't do anything back. You love us instead. Mm -hmm. It's always the other way around. And, and now what's happening is people want to flip the narrative and say, well, we've turned the other cheek. It's always, we need to love thy neighbor when something happens to us. But why we have to always be the brunt of what's going on? Why now we start imposing these things and, and then, then everybody starts saying, well, oh man, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. And it's like, well, you know, it's a learned behavior. I go back to saying that. It's a learned behavior. Not right. No one to be violent and, and is, never but, condone violence. And right. And ha so there's such an interesting thing because we got to hold both of those. It's like, you don't condone it. You don't promote it. You understand it. You could almost even justify it. Um, if it's there, yeah. but, <laughs> tell them not almost. You not almost justify. So it's, is it the kind of thing then, Tracy, where it's like, how how should how should um, how should I like just like just like how should white America hold that hold black violence? Just say, look, okay. we, like we understand it, we get it. Just like, you know, but try to try to limit it, you know, or like, how do we hold it? Well, the whole thing is, we're not the violent ones. I and I'm with you. Listen, I. I so it's when I say when you said almost justified, it's not almost justified. It has been justified for years. Yeah. It's just coming to this point, or coming to the head. Where everybody's everybody's tired, yeah. You know, it's 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 tiring when you watch somebody that look like you handcuffed and dies. You 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 know what I mean? That you you and 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 somebody brought it up before I forget who said it, but you look at uh, this kid just shot nine people. He's sitting on a the car. They're giving him water. They're loosening his handcuffs. They're taking them to Burger King to get something to eat. But here you have a man sitting outside the, the market selling loose cigarettes, choked to death, beat senseless. Yeah. The, the, the violence that I hope it doesn't come, but the violence that looked like it's coming has been justified for years. Mm -hmm. it, and and there's, there's no, really no other way to put that. Like I said, I am a 51-year-old man. It's been justified since I was 12. You know, it's, it's just been justified for so many years. It's been justified for my, my, my forefathers. It's been justified. Mm -hmm. And now people are, 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 it's being videoed, it's being seen, and more people are, are joining in. So, so hopefully the awareness that everybody's coming to the, to the uh, conclusion of will help the violence be less. But we, we, they're going to beat us. They're going to kill us. They're going to continue to do that. They're, they're already continuing to do it. So un, until, again, that the mutual respect that you should have for me as a human, not even as a black man, as a human being, a dog gets more respect. If I go and kick a dog in the street, be, oh, God, why do you do that? Why do you do that? But I can get beat in the head with a billy club, or what did he do? He deserved, he did something, he did something. They wouldn't just do that. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. You have to have a mutual human respect. Period. I agree. I agree. I never understood that, man, where the guy blew up a whole a black church. A guy got pulled out of his apartment with severed heads in the fridge. Yes. And out there with bulletproof vests and protected. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's man. taken alive. And yeah. he's taken alive. Yeah. And then, the young uh, man yeah. that lost his life in his own apartment. This lady should have been charged with murder. First yeah. degree. You went into his home. But you, you get she get charged for I think it was third degree murder. She got a hug. And and a hug. <laughs> and, and and that goes to show you we're not violent people. This man family wouldn't hug this woman. We are not violent people. I do not teach my son violence. I teach my son to protect himself. I teach my daughter to protect himself. They are not going to go out here and start anything. We have never started the violence. Never, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. 
in history, we never started the violence. You know, that shows there's like history is written by the victors. The history books are written by the victors. Right? Yeah, exactly. it's, and then it shows there's like, there's a tremendous amount of education and um, just sort of reconditioning or unconditioning of a lot of untruths that needs to happen. What I'm, I just want to reflect and, you know, we're, we're coming up. I mean, I could I could keep going for hours here, but want to be respectful of everybody's time and coming up on to ten o'clock right here. Would love to do it again, but but kind of maybe start to wrap up. I want to share what I'm hearing reflected from you guys, and um, like you said it a few times, what you said just now, Tracy, man, is like you're like we're tired. Like, how much more of this do we have to come on? Like, come right. on. You know, and and I think that that strikes me in a in a way. It's like you hear people say like we're angry. It's like I get it, you know, and it's like we're we're this and that, but it's like we're tired. And that just that hits in a different it hits a different piece. Yeah. And I think there's something I don't know, I mean, there's just something strong about acknowledging that. Um you know, it just reminds me times, there's times sometimes when you're just like, you know, I'm sure we've all been there. You get in a fight with your partner, your wife, or your girlfriend, and you're yelling and you're screaming and whatever, and you know you're right. And then eventually they're just like worn down and you're just like, fuck, maybe I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you knew they were angry. You knew all these things, but it wasn't until you saw them just like when they're just like, okay, snap, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you almost it's, it's easier, to, word. It's easier yeah. to hold when they're yelling back than when they just say, "I've had enough." Yeah. And at that point, so that's one thing that's just sort of standing out a little bit. And I've and I've heard and there is a narrative that's starting to come up. I've seen articles going around of like, there's a difference between being saying I'm being not racist and anti-racist and that right. conversation, <clears throat> but it does, what I'm hearing a lot is that there has to be that segment of the bystanders is like, you guys got to step up because it's not changing until you step up. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of, um, Maybe I knew it, I've heard it, you hear it, but after like really just hearing you guys straight up, you know, it's like not, I don't want to say that you put your head in the sand, you see it, but I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm going to talk like these guys are, are, I'm sure they feel it to some degree, you know, because I mean, I'm not going to lie, they don't, but it's like, you know, living safe neighborhood stuff and like you guys are angry and you right. should you know what I mean? But like, it's like, fuck, man, these, these guys, are, these aren't like, this is regular people doing their thing the best they can. And it's like, what the fuck? What are we supposed to do? And there's something about that message. I don't know where, but that feels like a strong thing that the essence of that, I don't really hear so much in the narrative. Not that it isn't there. Maybe I, maybe it's there and I'm not hearing it and I'm hearing it now, but that just feels like that's something really strong to amplify. And I, I don't know, I don't really have any a question there. I just wanted to speak that because that's that's just what's coming strong for me here. Yeah, I well, agree. It, it is. It's true. Black people are tired and <laughs> they're just tired of, of what's going on. You know, like I talk to my girl all the time or I talk to other black people all the time about it and just letting them know, you know, it's it's just been hard and like just if, if somebody knew just how it feels to have to walk, you know what I'm saying, just a day in just a pair of our shoes. Any you can pick any black person, just just on any level, they're gonna experience some sort of discrimination, racism, just because of the color of their skin. And it's just, yeah, we're, we're tired. 
You know, and that's the thing. Like, like people probably say, like, like I can see how unfair that is, but I never really thought about how exhausting that could be. Yeah. You know, to have that, just always having to deal with that. Like, I, I, you know, I know how it, like, being a paraplegic can be exhausting. Yeah. Right. Well, every time you have to reach for something, I mean, think about it. You you even say that, and every time you have to reach for something, you're reminded that you're in that wheelchair, and it's like that's a constant reminder. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing where I've, when I was out of a wheelchair, and I was, I've been out of a wheelchair 38 years. I've been in one for two and a half, so I'm still close to it. And I could have sympathy for somebody in a wheelchair, and I could feel bad for somebody in a wheelchair, just as I could have sympathy for black people or what they've been through, all the same. And then, but I never looked at somebody in a wheelchair and thought, God, that's got to be exhausting. Right, right. And now there's that part of me where it's like, that's probably, I mean, I'm good. You know, I don't need anybody to, to do anything. But if I wanted to get acknowledged for anything, it would be to do take care of my shit through the challenge of how exhausting it is and right. um, and i hear that in this conversation and i think that there's something really important about that that needs to come out you know like i i mean it's striking me right and and, and i would think that it would strike just other people that care but maybe aren't compelled enough to actually do anything and i'm not even sure what there is to you know whatever there is to do it's like one thing to go to a protest but just to be conscious of it of where you're like you, t you re it's like that race you talked about that analogy it's like well maybe i do need to just slow down maybe, right maybe i maybe i actually do need to stop and turn around and like go help and just right like, maybe, maybe that is the answer because like, because they're fucking exhausted. Right. <laughs> if they're yelling, being like, get the fuck back here. What if this isn't fair? I got, I didn't get a head start. This isn't right, blah, blah, blah. But if they're like, yo, I'm, tr I'm trying. Hey, I'm like, come on, man, I'm, I'm thirsty. I, like, I'm doing what I can. Yeah. So I don't know, that feels really, and I think that's a good place to maybe complete or something, at least for, I, I want to spend some time sitting in that space a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, no, that's a good space to be in. And, and uh, you know, I saw something where uh, it's been going around that they, you know, it was a white lady who asked all the white people in the room, would you, who, who here would trade their lives to be treated like the, the, their black friends or the black people? And nobody did. That's that professor. That's that professor. That, I've seen her. That right there is a space you need to be in. Yeah. The fact that they, nobody wants to trade their so, so that means they acknowledge they know about it right because if you don't want to trade if you ask that same question and say who would trade their life with a celebrity or who would trade like they all you know some people raise their hand but you just said with another uh, just a different race of people like you didn't you didn't say somebody was more was poor you didn't say they were handicapped you didn't say anything you just said a different race of people yeah and nobody wants to switch. That right. right there, my friend, is some scary shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, they don't want to run that race. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to run that race. Believe that. You should. Uh. Uh. That. That same professor. Uh. Kenny. You should look it up. She did the brown eyes, blue eyes test. And that that was a that was a pretty uh interesting test. You know when people were faced with with discrimination because of the color of their eyes, you yeah. know, they didn't really like that. So it, it, it was just interesting to see that, you know, play out. And that lady mm -hmm. asked that same question to those students. She was the one who did that test. And she's conducted a lot of tests over the years uh, yeah. in terms of race. See, that's a safe space right there, Ron. That, that's the space you got to work in right there. Yeah. And say why people don't feel comfortable of, you know, wanting to switch race with somebody of how they get treated, not their race, but how their other race is treated. Exactly. 
You know, that that talks about, Brent, you mentioned that that test and this idea of education and systemic. I, I just remember now, this was years back. I'm going to look this up actually afterwards. I took this online, it was like a racism test or something, but it was this, it was done in a very interesting way where they would flash a picture of somebody's face and it could be uh, like a man or a woman or black or white. And, um, and then some, some of them would be happy and some of them would be angry. Sometimes the black, sometimes the white. And then they would flash. I, I don't remember exactly the triggers were, but it was like press left if it's plus, press left if it's good and press right if it's bad or something like that. And then they'd flash some sort of like words that were like happy or angry or something. And it's amazing how the, the just the, um, the preconceived judgments that have been taught to us because mm -hmm. we're taught so much fear it, in the media, in the public eye, and all of this has perpetuated this stereotype that's just part of the conditioning that even people who aren't racist still Correct. see a black man and equate it to a threat. Correct. It's just this thing that's there. Like, wh where did it come from? Who's perpetuating it? Why is it continuing to happen? Because it's not the person. It is something else. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we'll, um, but I, like, I didn't, I didn't score as good on that test as I thought, <laughs> <did. laughs> you know? And the thing is, like, I mean, I can say that honestly, because you guys know me. Like, it's, yeah. it's nothing, but it's been in the space. Like, I've shown through, not from this conversation, like, you've known me, like, you know, like, <laughs> Your life, um, exactly. so, so that's why I, I took this test and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 I like, I like, and I was finding myself and I don't remember the exact triggers, but I was finding myself getting the wrong answers. That I, and while it was happening, or like the wrong answers, and I'm just like, I don't know, like, I was feeling so like bad about myself. <laughs> but that, like that speaks though to something that shows how there is this that's what i want to get to you know us collectively what is that fucking core piece on the inside that we have to get to what is that rotting wood underneath that we have to get to you know to act I, I believe you guys get they got to get rid of the fear you have to get rid of the fear of blacks. They're, they're, we are not the enemy. We are not the violent ones again. You have a fear uh, that was built into you because because of the wrong you've done. Period. Or not you per se. You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah but yeah, there's yeah. a fear because there's a fear because of that. You know, and and I truly believe they. You have to get over it. You have to. I, I listen, I agree to that, man, on such a like profound level, just on a quick side note, the work that I do and, and whatnot, I'm, I'm very deep into the into the field of consciousness and uh, growth and evolution and and some far out metaphysical shit. And, <laughs> and so we'll talk about in another conversation. I would love to. But um, but but fear is the polarity peace and it really comes down to like if you choose love or you choose fear and everything that's birthed from fear is a distortion into that so so i think there's so much truth to what you're saying tracy and then like that is something in and of itself that i think would be really important to unpack is yeah. that question how do we remove this um this feeling of fear that is just rampant in society that continues to get um, glorified, whether it's media or whether it's news or stories or across the board, I think there needs to be some really deep conversation and uncovering of why is there fear? Where does that come from? What are the narratives? And what is continuing consciously or consciously, purposely or not purposely to feed that narrative that we can we can stop in that cycle so that we stop getting things that feed us to make us feel afraid so that like dudes like me don't score poor on those tests. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, like, what is it? What is it that I've, what's been in my field that has created that? And that's what I want to try to find. How to how, start addressing those things, because I think that does answer to your point. Like, that's like the nail, man. If we are, um, you know, the things that fear us, we demonize. And if we stopped being afraid, then it opens everything else up. So um, maybe the next conversation we have, let's 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 dig into that. Let's dig into the narrative of the fear. Yeah, no, point, let me know. We're we're not the violent one. Like, I, look, man, I am. I, I I've I've done enough. Like, man, I, I've seen enough of the damage. I know what colonialism has done uh, of who the who the perpetrators are. You know. <laughs> So that's not, and that goes long before, you know, as deep. But anyway, um, so I agree with you. But my agreement, what does it mean? Where can we find the systemic pieces? And maybe some of them are, are continuing to be self-perpetuating. You know, how can we start to call those out and see them? What are the things that are feeding this cycle of fear so that we can uh, acknowledge it and then start to do something about it? Just so. got to have keep having these conversations yeah so anyway listen let me let me let you guys i don't want to get the last word here maybe if you, anything you guys want to wrap up to say like a, a last parting piece or something uh, um i would say change will only be made when those who are unaffected are just as outraged as those who are affected yeah um yeah i'll say Shoot, <laughs> you always you always have to realize that somebody that the other person like there's there's issues always going on with the other person, and you can't just you know subject yourself to just thinking about just yourself. You know, it's really true when we say we are in this together. Because in the end, that's how it goes. We are in this together. Whether we have different races, different sizes and shapes, we're still in this together, you know? And in order to ultimately overcome, there has to be unity. You know, right now everybody's separated and it's gonna start with people coming together. We're starting to see people come together. Now the talks have to, start happening so that way we have to come to some sort of an understanding so we can move forward from there yeah but you know it's it's going to start with unity for sure love peace respect and unity we like that man it was good seeing you guys man yeah hey pleasure too. meeting you also sir yeah you too yeah. tracy any last words for any anything you want to finish up with get them old motherfuckers out <laughs> 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 love, love, peace, unity, respect, and get those old motherfuckers out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need some new blood in there, man. We definitely, you know, those, those, the Congress uh, seats and the Senate seats, like, we definitely need some new blood in there. And it don't have to all be black faces, but we need a diverse set of people that are able to think on a clear, you know, playing field. For sure. Hey, man. All right. Um, thank you, guys, man. It's so good to drop in with you. Thank you, man. Oh, hey, we totally appreciate it, man. Yeah, it was a good conversation. And, you know, we're definitely going to have it again. You know, yeah. I definitely appreciate uh, these talks. I know Tracy does. <laughs> hey, Tracy, sure, Tracy, I'm gonna make sure next time we set this up that um, Brian, make sure we we do it when you guys are on a shift together again. Hey, oh I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just give my number. I'll log on the Zoom. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, no problem. We we'll make that happen. I, I would love to stay connected. I mean, this is this is how it works. It just the connective tissue has to stay strong so the nodes stay strong, and then it and then it continues to grow and build. This is something sure. I would like my children to see also. So thank you. Absolutely. My pleasure. Okay. All right. Oh. Fellas, we'll talk to you soon.
All Please right, man. Take care, stay man. Up, Thank you. Stay safe, Aaron. Stay safe, B. All right, KP. Stay safe, bro. You too, man. All right. Stay safe, Aaron. You too, brother.